Hi, my name is Lauren Brown. I'm a doctor of traditional Chinese medicine. My practice is in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. It's called AccuBalance Wellness Center. That's AccuBalance.ca. And I'm also the founder of HealthySeminars.com. And those that have been following me know that I love to learn. And I want to learn more about consciousness and why I'm here. And so I've been talking to some great minds. And today we have Minas Kafatos. Did I say it right? Kafatos. <laughs> Kafatos. I tried to say it fast so it wouldn't sound so bad. <laughs> so... Uh, Minas and I met um, back in uh, 20, late 2018. We were at the uh, Building Bridges Conference that Master Nan Lu put on. And um, I got to hear you speak, which was uh, a great privilege. And, um, you know, I just want to let the audience know, because if you Google Minas, you'll find lots about him. But in short, you can read his bio on his website. But what I know of him is he's a scientist. He's a physicist, a quantum physicist. And he's passionate about consciousness and the environment. And today I want to have a follow-up question because when we were together, I think it was Virginia where we were at that conference yes. together. Yeah. We were having a nice discussion. We were talking about electric cars. We were talking about everything, consciousness. And I brought up to you saying, you know, there's a lot of concern about our species, the evolution of humanity and our planet. You know, is the planet going to implode? Are we going to become extinct? And I said to you, you know, Einstein says you can't solve a problem at the same level of thinking that you've created at, created at. So I thought there must be something we have to do to get out of the conscious into this super conscious. And I just said, what is the future of humanity? If we want to evolve, what do we need to do? And you said, it's about one mind. And then I said, what? And you said, sorry, I have to catch a plane. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's where the conversation ended. <laughs> so here's the continuation. Um, what do you see as the evolution of humanity, and what does one mind have to do with that? So one mind is another uh, term we, we can use uh, instead of consciousness. Uh, it gives the idea that, in fact, all our minds are one or the source of all the minds is one and uh, there are not really that many words in english to get into the different aspects of consciousness we really have only one or two words for consciousness we have consciousness awareness uh, then of course we, have, we talk about conscious experience etc cetera, etc cetera. but generally when uh, particularly the scientific um, um, jargon when we say consciousness is usually connotes uh, conscious of something else um, you know being serious or knowledge knowing and the con is the something else uh, whereas of course um, in the more instant traditions the um, Chinese uh, Tao um, tradition and uh, Qigong of course that uh, Master Nanlu uh, works on and promotes uh, Zen Buddhism uh, and then the different kinds of uh, ancient Hindu philosoph philosophical schools uh, they use many different words to make a long story short they, they give they use many different words for consciousness uh, I like the term uh, mind or one mind it's of course it, it, it can be traced to Buddhism but one mind indicates that um, basically uh, the conscious awareness is one and then our perceptions of different minds is probably just a projection of our own mind <laughs> the, our own individual mind so uh, I think the the source of everything is consciousness or if you like to call it one mind uh, or that's what I use many times when I talk to scientific audiences and um, um, then the various shades of consciousness uh, is something that we can get into uh, in more discussion. How do we know that this one mind, because I hear this a lot today in spiritual practices, there's this one mind, let's, we need to tap into this one mind, we'll find answers. So I have a two-part question is, so if there is this one mind, how, does, how is this going to solve humanity? So what's, what's that role? And two is, for people that... Like, yeah, we see this in the books. We hear the sages take talk about this. But how do we feel that we have faith or trust that there is this one mind? Because on a daily basis, it feels like we're separate. And one mind sounds like we're all connected and we have access to this. So 
how do we speak to the masses that say, why would I want to shift or change or, or do ac activities, um, process work to help me connect to this one mind if I don't even believe it exists? So that's my two-part question. How does one mind solve the problem of human evolution? And two is, how do we connect to this or believe that this actually exists? They're both very good questions. Let's start with the second question, uh, because the first one is, uh, it goes deeper. It's an excellent question. Uh, and of course, at the end of the day, if uh, whatever hypothesis, because it is a hypothesis, uh, we put forward one mind or one consciousness or universal consciousness, if it doesn't have any effect or it connects to everyday life, then what good is it? I mean, you know, then it's another, another philosophy, another theory. So that's, that's, of course, um, um, a very important question. And uh, I would add uh, to what you just said, to, to the question that many people ask, um, what, how come that if the world of duality that we experience every day, are you telling us that this world of duality is really one mind? And the answer is, uh, for sure, the world of duality, uh, seems to be real. It's actually quite real in many ways, uh, but it's not ultimately uh, real. In other words, it doesn't last forever. And how do we know that? Well, we know it from our everyday experience. Our thoughts change all the, all the time. Our minds change all the time. <laughs> I change my mind. That's, an, ex <laughs> that's a, an expression that goes on all the time. Oh, I change my mind. Uh, feelings, of course, come and go. Thoughts come and go. So our own experience is that Everything in our everyday life is transitory, okay? So here is a possibility. What if we try something else? If, if what we're doing works, then I'll take off my hat and say, hey, you know, uh, you got it. <laughs> it works for you. What do you need, where, why do you need to go somewhere else? Stop, stop, you know, inquiring. If it works for you, that's it. You are on the right path. But if it doesn't, then I... I welcome everybody, I welcome the audience, I welcome any individual. Why don't we try something else? Why don't we try something that perhaps may uh, give us some clues or may lead us somewhere, instead of rejecting it right up front and say, well, I don't believe in it. Okay, uh, we don't believe a lot of things, and yet many things happen in our lives. Like, for example, we don't believe that one day we're going to die, but we are going to die, right? Uh, we don't believe that uh, tomorrow, whatever, you know, whatever we don't believe, yet these things happen. So the important point is, does, how does duality come out of unity awareness? Because it really comes down to that. Um, this is a deep question. This is actually uh, the whole enchilada, so to speak. It's all about that. And um, the secret, and it's not really that great secret, is to just be focused on our own awareness. Just be aware that you are aware. You don't have to do anything. Just stop for a second. Say, oh, I exist. Just go do that contemplation. You don't have to believe it. You know, whether you believe you exist or you don't exist. Of course, everybody knows that we exist, right? I don't have to tell you, well, you don't exist. Then I'm going to say, you know, you're crazy. Of course, I know I exist. So let's start from that. In fact, the whole secret is we exist. That existence is what we can call it one mind. Now, the term one mind uh, stands from uh, doubts in people's minds because the word mind, <laughs> you know, the mind doesn't really like to talk about the mind, right? <laughs> so to speak. But let's say that it is the awareness of our own existence. So that's the, that's the practical aspect. Very, very easy to follow. Very, everybody can do it. Anybody can do it. You don't even have to take courses. You don't have to take uh, seminars, you don't have to enroll in, in classes, it's your own existence. Now the first point was um, um, how, do, well the first point was about the cosmic consciousness, right? Yes. And um, so tell me a little bit more specific what you like, because okay, you said, uh, we say that everything, that, uh, everything there is is cosmic consciousness, right? How right. do we know that? Well, again, it's related to the second one. It is by process of elimination. What do we mean by that? Um, let's assume that it's not. Let's assume that cosmic consciousness does not exist. And let's assume that all there is is these fragmented uh, uh, realities, our fragmented views. We, uh, 
our mind changes all the time. How does the whole thing fit together? <laughs> you know, when you inquire, when you go deeper into it, there's no way that all these uh, quadrillions and zillions and, uh, in fact, probably uncountable units of awareness, uncountable objects in the universe, maybe uncountable universes, maybe for sure uncountable planets. How do they all fit together to give us the whole view of the universe? Because we have we have this sense that the whole thing hangs together. We, if we didn't believe that, we would not, we would not do science because what's the point of doing science if everything is just fragmented and going everywhere, it doesn't fit together. Then we might as well do something else, right? But we scientists believe, uh, as the ancient philosophers, and they're not really that different, that there is a unity in the cosmos. There's a unity in the cosmos. The question is, what is that unity? And again, it goes back to the second point, that unity is what you are, what I am, what we all are. It's got, it is right in front of our eyes, but before, because it is in front of our eyes, we don't see it. It's like the, of course, I know this is a practical example. It's like the fish in the, fish in, in the, in the, in the ball, right? It's in the, yeah. The, the fish doesn't know that it's in the water. It doesn't know there is a ball. You know, it just swims. Right. And somebody says, oh, you're in the water. And, it's, and the fish will say, what is water? <laughs> <laughs> it's water? Exactly. So you're saying, like, if you want to hide something, hide it in plain view, basically. So here we exactly. are. <laughs> <laughs> the, best, the best spies, by the way, are the ones who walk around. <laughs> they're not hiding. You know? <laughs> they're the best spies. <laughs> so if there's this unity, there's this consciousness. I've heard before where people say, like, as you say, reverse engineer, um, all the, the, the Cosmo, to say it's random is ridiculous. Like there's got to be some unifying purpose behind it. Somebody said that's like taking all the materials that would go to build like a 747. Like you have them all in a big dump and you throw them in the air and it yeah. lands and it builds you a plane. Everything yeah. perfectly. Yeah. That, that, how likely is that to happen? <laughs> Almost impossible. Same thing with this universe that we have. Something had to have some intention. Well, actually, in terms of the, your question, we know how unlikely that is to happen. It is, you know, um, it, let me put another way, which is a similar thing, uh, a little bit simpler example and more, more funny. Um, how, what is probability or how long would it take for a monkey? And you take your, uh, your favorite monkey. And I, don't, I have nothing against monkeys, but let, let's take a monkey or a dog, okay, or a cat. Put it in front of the computer and have, teach it, you know, with its paws or its hands to do this, you know, start typing on the computer, right? And how long will it take it to write Hamlet? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, people calculated that. And, yeah. and it will be one followed by 38 zeros mm -hmm. of years. Well, <laughs> it's ridiculous. So as you said, you take, you take all the parts that make up a 747, or the same thing, by the way, I, I use the example of Notre Dame de Paris because I like the cathedral. Take all the parts of Notre Dame de Cathedral, Throw yeah. them up in the air and said, oh, they all came down and they formed this wonderful cathedral. Oh, this 747 came down and formed it. It's ridiculous. So the only way that you can have this random process work, and this is the key point, is to have a huge number of cases or universes where things are happening randomly. And then in one of those, it just happened to be the one we live in. Oh, okay. But so that's, that's, not, that's not an explanation. If you think about it, it's, it's a terrible way to do business, right? <laughs> you say, well, I, give, I keep flipping coins. I don't yeah. get, and actually you throw up all the coins in the air. And somewhere in some universe, they come down exactly the right way. And voila, I have Hamlet in front of me. So that's not how nature works. Why do scientists, or some scientists, I, I, I don't think all scientists, but why do some scientists promote that point of view? And my, my answer to this is very simple. It goes straight to the core of the matter, and this is where I become passionate, is because various people don't want to mention the C word. They don't want to mention consciousness. Because the C word leads to the G word. <laughs> it leads to God. <laughs> But, <laughs> but let's say, let's leave God out of it. Okay, we're not going to mention God. Um, how about consciousness? Has science really explained consciousness? Has philosophy explained consciousness? Has any human thought explained consciousness? The answer is absolutely not. And then the ancient philosophy schools, they say it is the ground of everything. And therefore, you can't really prove it. You cannot, you can talk about it, 
but certainly you can experience it because it is your own being and certainly you can become one with it and that's really at the bottom the bottom of the whole thing it, it reminds me then of um, it goes with your water analogy with the fish but i'm thinking about because uh, the Tao is in chinese medicine the Tao that can be named is not the Tao. Exactly. so it's the same thing the fish can't see water it can't be you you can understand its um effect in this world but you can't name it or touch it or ex explain it very easily anyhow you can right. right so then it's my understanding with this idea of one mind then um the the assumption i think we're having here is that because we live in duality we think we think we're separate and and we're in competition this leads to war and all the problems we have on our planet and if we become aware if we become conscious and aware and realize there's this connection then it would be difficult for us to um, be set to think separately and then harm each other for example i have this complete body here um, and it'd be like me thinking my hand if, if i hit myself with my hand i chop it off because i'm upset with it well, i would never do that because it's part of the whole and I'm aware of my hand, but I don't know if my hand is aware of the rest of me. <laughs> yeah, but that's actually besides the point, whether your hand is aware of the rest of you. The point is that you're aware, <coughs> excuse me, you're aware of, the, of your hand. And as you said, uh, you will not likely cut your hand off. I mean, some people do crazy things, but <laughs> if somebody did that, they would say, well, that person is really crazy. You know, they cut off his. <laughs> or maybe he had, you know, it happens like this. Maybe he had a severe infection or he got bitten by a cobra, you know, and he had to cut his hand fast so the poison does not propagate. Okay, so these are extreme cases, right? Yeah. But normally we would not do that. So if, you, if we see each other as ourselves, then we are very likely not to harm them and we are very likely not to harm ourselves. And what if we don't? Well, this is what you get. If we, if we don't, maybe the ancient seers, the ancient philosophers, the ancient sages say, maybe this is the source of what is going on. And um, Buddha, you know, said, okay, the reason that we, um, we have suffering is because we have suffering. We don't know we're suffering. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, let's look at suffering itself. And when you look at suffering, you say, well, you know what? There's something beyond the suffering that, that we have. You know, in the suffering, I, I'm looking at some of the things you sent me. You talked about eight steps to connect everyday life to the cosmic reality. Right. And, and one of them, um, number eight, uh, says things that happen in our life which give us hard time are the ones that really advance us. And, you know, again, coming from ego, coming from feeling separate, um, I don't want to have to suffer to grow. Is there a possibility that you can grow and enjoy life and be conscious and, and, and have peace and serenity? Or... Or do you believe, subscribe to that, no, you need the pain to move you? No, I don't, I don't subscribe to you need the pain. I don't subscribe to no pain, no gain. I do not subscribe to that. <laughs> All I'm saying in that number eight is that seems to be the condition of human beings. Yeah. And when we look at our own lives, we can say, did I advance because when I was uh, having a good time? Rarely. When, you know, when, when this point eight and the eight step comes uh, or where people say, yeah, they nod their heads, say, yeah, yeah. And then the question is, does it have to be that way? And the answer to that is absolutely not. It does not have to be that way. Then what makes it be that way? <laughs> Let's give that as a reality. It seems to be that way. Does it have to be that way? And again, the answer is no, it doesn't have to be that way. Why is that? Why does it seem to be that way? It's because, again, of the mind. Because the mind gets in the way and it's only when the mind is challenged or is pushed or gets to suffer that it begins to look for alternatives out of its own usual way, business as usual. Okay. okay. Um, thank you for that. And so this one mind idea, because this was the beginning, then I have one or two questions from other people. The idea is to become aware, realize we're all connected um, and tap into this um, uh, this conscious, this super consciousness. You're not going to use the G word, the God word, the universal energy, whatever people call it. Um, but have you been there? Have you have you found time where you feel connected to source? And because people talk about this feeling, I guess I'll ask the question this way: Some people um, they they share their experience of feeling love and connected and knowing everything and loving everybody and everything's just going to be great no matter what their life situation is. 
And so this is the experience people have. And then there are scientists like yourself, Quantum, that say this is a, a conscious experience. Um, and, and then there are some that are scientists that say this is just certain ways chemicals and brain firing and you're having a, an experience in your brain, but it has nothing to do with consciousness. Yeah, so the, let's take the last point. How do they know? <laughs> it's another assumption. So, you know, oh, yeah, it's all chemicals. Okay, okay, how do you know? Uh, have you ever seen a, chem a chemical that uh, is separate from, um, you know, how will you know if you, if you have no access to it? You know, so uh, there's, these are just words. They say, well, it's all a bunch of, it's again the same thing. If I throw all the parts up in the air, they're going to come by magic. They come down to the, so the, uh, the folks who believe that kind of thing, they really believe in magic. <laughs> it's got to be a, a super magic here that's going on because otherwise, man, it sounds really spooky. So, um, in fact, um, in a way, they are more religious than the religious people <laughs> because you believe in something that is out of this world. How does in our experience, it doesn't work that way. You know, when you go and drive the car, you say, well, you know what? I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go over there. 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 Somehow I'm going to end up in the car and I'm going to, I'm not going to turn on the ignition. I'm just going to start doing something else. And lo and behold, the car is driving. It doesn't happen that way. So what, if it doesn't happen in our everyday lives, why do you think that it happens in the universe? It's again because to avoid the C word. <laughs> consciousness. So let we're not, we, my listeners and you and I, we don't have to avoid the consciousness. Right, so right. you're, um, are, what are your main practices that you'd recommend to people? Because the question I have here, I have a couple, I have a couple small ones here. Um, I'd love to hear what small, this is from Kathleen Lee. I'd love to hear what small steps we can do as individuals to raise the collective. Sometimes I feel overwhelmed by the weight of the world and just say screw it instead of taking a small step. So can you list one or two small steps that we can do to raise the collective? Since we are, are the collective, what do we do on our own to raise the, 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 the conscience of the whole? Do you have any so, advice? It's an excellent question. I would say take that, that first step with yourself. Before we go to save the world, Let's see how we save ourselves. And I don't mean that in an egotistical way. I mean, pay attention to the little things in your life, starting with you. You know, like in the airplanes, I fly a lot. And you always, you know, you always hear that. And it is actually the way that it is. Let's say if there is a, cab is a loss of uh, pressure, cabin pressure, and the masks uh, fall, right? The oxygen mask fall. Put the mask first on yourself before you put it on your child. Okay. I like that. You know, I have a on your child, not on yourself first. First on your on yourself, and then on your child. We think, oh, first on the child, and then on myself. No, if you try to do that, you're going to be faint. For sure, it's not going to be helped. Save first. yourself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. My uh, teacher of consciousness that I see on a weekly basis. I don't know if she said this or she heard it somewhere else, but I love it. Um, somebody once said, "I want to heal the planet, right? I want to heal the world," and she says. To heal, the, heal your own mind to heal the planet. That's all you have to do is heal your own mind, and that's how you heal the planet. I think this question is related from Jennifer uh, Brittenham. She said, can you please ask him how we can raise the consciousness of large groups at the same time? Is that the same question, basically, heal your own it's mind? The it's the same. I would say work. one step at a time, raise your own consciousness, then work with the people immediately around you, is you and family members, but it doesn't have to be family members, it can be friends. Work with them one at a time, but starting with you, two, three, four, five, get together. And then eventually you will start seeing, oh my God, by the time you are like 10 people, I think the number is around 10 or 20 people that come together and they're like minded, you are going to see miracles happen. And in fact, the miracles happen even with fewer people. But uh, before saving the world, let's build it one step at a time. You don't, we, again, we don't build the uh, 747 all of a sudden. Snap our fingers and there it is. Well, if we did that, that would be God, right? You snap the fingers, there it is, right? Or, or, Th or Thanos, if you saw the Avengers movie. <laughs> right, exactly. Or Thanos. <laughs> exactly. So it does happen that way. It's uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, it is a one step at a time, hard work, 
Athletes know that, musicians know that, quantum physicists know that, poets know that. In fact, every human being knows that. I mean, you know, what, what are we arguing about? I mean, do you cook food by just snapping your fingers and there is the, the food? Take paprika, you take salt, whatever you want to make, you know, you start collecting the vegetables, you put them together, you read what you're supposed to do, you take boil water. Man, there's like 10 different steps. And then we say, well, voila, now you have an amazing soup. But in order to make an amazing soup, you have to take the ingredients. And you, first of all, you have to have an idea of the amazing soup. Before the 747 was built, somebody had the idea, let's build a super plane that is going to be even more advanced than 707 or the 7 blah, blah, 737, et cetera, et cetera. Somebody had an idea. So it's the same thing with consciousness. It's not different. And I think I, um, on your website, now, is your website your name? Is it, is it your name, just minascafatos.com? Is that, is that? www.minascafatos, uh, one word, at, uh, I mean, dot com, yeah. Yeah, because so, I'll let, I just, um, for the listeners, yeah, to know that there's some great videos and interviews um, with Minas yeah. on there, so I highly recommend you go there. And also, um, I didn't say in an original introduction, but um, you're a prolific writer, published, um, I think uh, uh, close to or over 400 publications under your name. So, you know, you do a lot of research and publication. Um, you're an author. Some of the books are The Conscious Universe, The Non-Local Universe, um, and You Are the Universe with, um, that you wrote with Deepak Chopra. Um, and again, there's your, your, your website. So just want to direct the listeners there because I started going through there and even have a course on iTunes. Um, right. It's fantastic that I just kind of started to look at. So... On the consciousness, if you're interested, this is where to go. Does this, and we got to wrap up because we only have so much right. time, right, which, right. I, which I'm going to challenge you because I thought all you quantum physicists say time is infinite. <laughs> it's, it's all, if everything's happening right now in the holy moment, then time is infinite. But today we're going to be in duality and we have only so much time together. Well, we're going to just say that time is infinite, but also time exists at our level. So but this is actually the quantum, the quantum. Uh, <laughs> Paradox. You, the Does the quantum work? This is the question I get from other scientists. They say the quantum physics exists, but it only works in the very, very small. It doesn't work in the world that we They live. don't know. They do not know. Today, we know that all the senses, this is actually a work that has been published. A lot of this work has been published in science and nature, top journalists of science. I don't know why these people, what, what kind of journals they read, but no, it's, uh, we know today that um, every single sense, of the senses, the human senses, is a quantum sense. And you can detect a single photon. You can hear uh, down to, I don't know how many, I, there's like a, a human ear, which is not actually the best because there are dogs and things like that. It's millions and millions of different frequencies. We can smell down to nanoscale mole molecules, pick individual molecules, and then you can get smell. So our senses are quantum. I don't know why they say, you know, with micro and uh, our, our senses are quantum. So if our senses are quantum, the question then arises, how come if our senses are quantum, they give us the view of a classical universe? Aha, uh -huh. that's, that is a deep question. <laughs> we have to. The answer to that, the answer, it's a very simple answer. It's the okay. mind. It's the mind. It's the mind, your perception. You see the world through the lens of your subconscious. You yeah. see the world as, not as it is, but as, as we are, I've been told. Exactly. As, as you would like to have it, we have some habits. I call them bad habits or good habits, whatever. We have habits. And one of our, the biggest habits of a human existence is to see the world fragmented. That is a function of the human mind. That is not the function of the one mind. So as we wrap up here, again, thank you for your time because thank I know how, how busy you are. Um, yeah. Check out Amina's um, website because you'll see um, videos and publications and where to order his books. They're fantastic. Um, I read uh, You Are the Universe and I was so pleasant to see that you were speaking at that conference that we were at together and we got to meet. And um, we'll talk more if you want to, for those that have watched this, we have more talks on consciousness. Um, the message I'm getting is it seems like um, as the way I'm interpreting Minas, what you've said here is, you know, what we've been living, the way we've been living hasn't been working. So, you know, if you can't prove about, if you can't prove consciousness um, and the way we've been living for the longest time is doesn't seem to be working. We're, we're try something to, else. <laughs> try something else. 
<laughs> and a lot of people, I know myself included and people in my, in my circle that are doing consciousness work, doing meditation, using, you know, Bruce Lipton talks about energy psychology, those techniques to work on their subconscious program, right. Um, right. becoming aware, monitoring their thoughts, like really becoming that witness, um, asking the question, who am I in a meditation, right? Um, they're experiencing um, a different, um, they're having a different experience. Why? Because their perception's changing. And as you're aware, science is measuring how um, things change in the amygdala, how cortisol levels go, DNA expression changes, brain waves change. So right. we're able to measure physiological changes in a, that are good physiological changes when you slow down and you ask these questions and you create awareness, which you said is a form of consciousness, become aware. That's right. So, and you don't need to go to school and uh, take courses. You can just sit and be quiet and if... And, but yet there are those there are courses that are available and so again there are courses there's techniques yes of course but stuff, you, have, you have stuff in your book so um, again check out um, uh, Minas's website because um, lots of information the last couple of days I started going through it in preparation for our conversation and I was like I felt like oh I don't even actually have to have this interview they're all the answers are all there, all there. <laughs> you're like how many times do I have to answer these questions <laughs> apparently a lot. <laughs> Well, that's a human mind. What can you do? <laughs> <laughs> Repetition is another way to change that, right? So, uh, that's right. So, so thank you very much, and I hope to have you on again, um, and enjoy the rest of your day. I appreciate thank, it. Thank you, Norman. Thank you. Thanks so Bye. much. Bye-bye. Well, I hope you enjoyed um, that conversation with Minas Kafatos. I hope I pronounced that uh, right. He's a Greek. As he uh, has shared when I went to see him speak, He's a Greek quantum physicist, and he's got several books. His website's beautiful. Um, we have other um, talks like this, and we're going to have continue to have more. So do check out our Facebook and YouTube page, um, on, and they're going to be on both Healthy Seminars and my clinic practice, AccuBounce. And for um, people in the Vancouver area or those that want to do it even long distance, um, I love to use the energy psychology techniques. Bruce Lipton, I think, coined the term energy psychology so Psyche, K, um, EFT, hypnosis. Um, currently, I've been training in um, the uh, rapid transformational therapy technique, which again is another, to me, another form of energy psychology, brain heart coherence. And every once in a while, I run workshops at the clinic where we can get into groups to do this because there's more power in groups, like literally that resonant bond, and there's uh, more healing and just um, better experience through my experience in group work and this working with groups, uh, we can get even more out of it than one-on-one. Happy to see you one-on-one at my clinic. And um, thank you for watching this video. And as uh, my teacher Gila says, um, heal your mind to heal the world. We heard me not say the same thing. So basically it's time to become conscious, to become aware. Um, if you want to heal others, you want to heal the planet, it starts with healing our own mind. That's the first step. Apparently, um, our reality is reflected back to us. So it's a nice reflection. So if you don't like what's going on in your life, it's time to look within, witness that, change those programs that aren't working for you because apparently we see the world as we are, not as, as it is, which is a very interesting concept. Can I prove it? Um, no, there's much smarter people that are trying to prove it, are proving it, but as Mina said, I don't know, try something differently. Apparently what we're doing hasn't been working so well for humanity. Um, so if we're looking for more peace and serenity and abundance on this globe, on this planet Earth, um, then let's look at healing our own minds, and that starts with consciousness work. Take care, and thank you very much.